here looking at the ruins of Pinnis Estate Great House. This is a house that I spent a lot of my formative years here. My father was the manager of Pinnis Estate over the period the early 40s towards the end of the 40s. On this stairway that on which I'm standing, this led up to the main room of the house, the bedrooms. But there was a stairway within the house leading to the kitchen, dining room, and storage rooms of this building. Three bedrooms on the upper floor, and there is a balcony overlooking the gut that passes to the back of the building and look overlooking the paddocks towards um, towards Jessup's estate. The front of the house, we look straight out into the into the estate yard, per se, and the road leading through this yard up to Mount Travers. The lower floor, as I said before, was mainly kitchen and dining area and partially stored. It was considered a, a large house in those days and um, I suppose it served us well, it served us well. On, the, on my right here is, as we came out, there is this, the remains or what's left of this very large tree. It is, um, we used to know it as, the, as an English salmon tree, we call it an English salmon. It's an African tree and it's known as the Baobab tree. The, it's still standing, I know of only two other such trees and neighbors who are um, and they were at the Bath Hotel grounds. This area has a lot of memories for me. The sheds, there's nothing to be seen of them where the copra was being made. The storage sheds for the coconuts. Part of my job here then as a boy was to count the coconuts when they came in from the fields. In those days, just for, I'm sure the average person doesn't remember this, they were the carts that carried the, the coconuts from the fields to here. They were drawn by cattle. They had a brace of four pairs of steers which took the coconuts from the field to the, to the estate yard. They were husked, broken, put on the sheds to be made into copra. And that's basically, that was basically the business of um, Finney's estate back in those days. Incidentally, when we first came to live at Pinnis. We lived then, prior to coming to live here at Pinnis, we had a home in Government Road. But my, before my mother and others and my siblings came over, my father used to come here and stay here at the estate house. And I used to come and stay with him. And one particular morning I got up to find that there was a a corpse in the house that I had slept in all night. I didn't know anything about it. It was the remains of the last resident of Mount Travers estate. She lived at Mount Travers, but because of the distance when she died, they brought her down here. She stayed at Finney's overnight prior to burial the next day. Um, I think she, her name, she was a Miss Maynard. She was the last of the men I had planned. Somebody, the, the only common name I remember with her, she was a relative of Eva Wilkin. There were lots and lots of memories to Pinnies, because in those days when we lived here, because the, the coconut industry was such a flourishing industry, the, the, the inner shell of the coconut, that was the main fuel for homes. Um, everybody used it for cooking, 
everybody used it for um, ironing the clothes and all that sort of thing. It was it was the main type of fuel. In fact, um, the trucks used to come here for the shells to take to Hamilton and to New River to fuel the, the then operational sugar mills. And um, I recall, especially on a Saturday morning, almost all the young ladies from from Craddock Road used to come here with their bags for their fuel for the week. A day in my life with Pinnies started at about 4.35 o'clock at morning where I had to go up towards Mount Travers where we kept the cows, the milk cows, to, to milk and bring back milk to the house. Um, come back, you do breakfast and I'd be off to school. I was then attending the, I just got a scholarship to the Excelsior School, so I had to go to school daily. And um, getting back home at afternoons, I had to check on the animals to see that they were all penned. There were several pens here, and mainly, mainly cattle, um, there were some horses and um, donkeys and mules and a lot and lot of pigs because you know the the pigs uh, um, fed on the offshot from the coconuts that they're being husked. Um, my normal weekends would start on a Friday when I'd go back to Charleston because we had to have some recreation. I had to be with the boys, and so when I came, I went into town on a Friday afternoon, Friday evening. I was a member of the then St. Paul's Anglican Church Choir, and after the choir, I would meet with people like Al Thompson and Burton Thompson and Selvin Walwyn and a few others of us, and we would, um, having gone to choir practice, I would end up down at Lost Street by a famous bar which was known as barkeeper's name was Primo and that's where we'll have our little recreation which was mainly <laughs> which was mainly beef and bread and um, we would have some drinks. And the interesting thing about those drinks were that they were supposed to be cold drinks and in those days there was no ice making mechanisms in Nevis, so the ice came from St. Kitts. Primo would buy probably 10 pounds of ice, put in a bath, a bath pan, and that would last all day, and you'd just put the drinks in. And when you get there in the evenings, the, the drinks uh, in the bath pan would have been sold, so you call for a soft drink, because in those days there was also a small um, juicy factory, a small factory in Charleston where a man named Henry Archibald he made his soft drinks. You would call for a soft drink and I said I want a cold drink and he would just take the bottle off the shelf, pass it through the water and give it to you and that was your cold drink. <laughs> so we always had a big laugh in that. And then he sold things like bananas and um, you would call for a banana and he would pull it off the bunch and rub it in the sand, soften it up and there was your ripe banana. <laughs> but those were the boy days. But when all this finished, I had to walk on my lonesome to come to Pinnies when everybody else is in Charlestown. It was sort of harrowing because before the days of electricity, Pinnies was known to have a lot of jumbies and I had to come and face the jumbies to come over here. But I survived, and here I am today. Be able to come back here and see the remains, what is left of pinners of the estate yard. It would be nice. I just um, happened to have had a tour of Mount Travers. It would be nice if the authorities would just do some work around the old building here and clear it out so that people could have an idea what some of these old buildings look like. Well, that's history. I'm Spencer Howell, uh, everybody knows me. Huh? 
Oh, oh, oh. Me. 